So now that we've learned the basics of how the calculation for a chi-square works, let's see how this would look in an example and see how JASP can help us get the answers to these questions. So the first question is Dr. Dam asked people what their class standing was. Class standing is freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. See how that's ordinal? That is not a number outcome, so we cannot run um, other statistics on that. And then she asked if they liked their degree path. So that would be like a yes, no answer. And that's nominal. So we're dealing with um, qualitative variables here. So the first question she might ask is how, oh, sorry, are people more likely to like their degree than not? So are they more likely to say yes, they like their degree or not? I put this how do you know piece in here so that I can remind you that when you're looking at the JASP output, what a number tells you your answer to your question. The next question she might ask is, did Dr. Dam sample all class standings equally, right? Does she have the same number of freshmen, sophomore, junior, and senior? I want to point out that these first two questions are really just asking about one variable at a time. The first question is asking about whether they like their chosen degree path. The second question is asking about sampling from all the different class standings. Notice that I haven't mixed the two. Since these first two questions are just asking about each variable on its own, those tests would involve goodness of fit. We'll do goodness of fit whether they like their degree, and we'll do a goodness of fit on the different class standings. But the more interesting question comes next. Is there a relationship between class standing and satisfaction with their degree? So um, what we're asking you to do then is combine the two you're gonna see if freshman, sophomore, junior, senior have the same likelihood of liking their degree path versus not liking their degree path. So that means we're gonna to wanna to do a test for independence to see if there's a different pattern for those who are liking their degree and those who aren't liking their degree. Now let's go see what that looks like in JASP. So I've opened up the data set for this degree choice and um, liking their degree, not liking their degree, and their class standing. And so let's move forward with how we would assess this. I want to point out that these are words. And so this is why these are indicated as um, nominal variables or ordinal variables. In this case, yes, no would be nominal. Um, you could have had these indicated with numbers. Perhaps you said yes is one and no is two. But you would want to make sure that JASP knows that this is a nominal outcome. So you can choose how to enter your data, but it's important that JASP knows that these are nominal or ordinal. Otherwise, we can't run the appropriate analysis. So we're going to click on frequencies because really how the chi-square works is that it looks at the count of the different conditions. So to run our first goodness of fit test, we're going to click on binomial test. And so the first question was, are people more likely to like their degree than not like their degree? So what we were looking at is the liking of the degree. So degree is the variable we're interested in. So I'm going to put that in this box here. Before I move forward, I want you to look at this test value. There are two options to liking the degree, yes or no. If you look back at the lecture where we talk about what a chi-square is doing, we're trying to see if the actual values match the predicted values. Since we're just going to say they're evenly split, then that would be a 50-50 chance of being in yes or no. So this test value of 0.5 represents 50-50. So I am okay with leaving this with a test value <clears throat> of 0.5. So I'm gonna click okay, and we're gonna look here. So it's saying the number of people um, that said that they liked their degree was 25. The number of people who said they didn't like their degree was 12. There's 37 people total. So we were looking to see if 67.6% .6 of people was significantly different than the predicted value of 50%, and if 32.4% was different than the predicted value of 50%. And so this p-value is indicating that 67.6 .6 is significantly different than the predicted value of half. So because this p-value is less than 0.05, we know that there were more people who said they liked their degree than there were people who said they didn't like their degree. So again, what we're doing is we're looking at how this 67.6% of people who said yes significantly differed from the prediction of 50%. So we're gonna wanna report that back on our notes 
But before we do that, let's answer the next question was, did the Professor Dam sample each class standing equally? So again, we'll go up to frequencies. We're going to click on the binomial test. And this time we're going to do class standing. Now, in, for class standing, there's <clears throat> four conditions here. Since there are four conditions, we want to see if they were equally represented. We no longer want this to be at 50%. This now should be changed to 25%. We want to know how each condition was similar to or dissimilar to the 25% prediction. We expect 25% of them to be freshmen, 25% of them to be sophomore, 25 junior, and 25% to be senior. We're not expecting 50% freshmen and 50% not freshmen, and 50% sophomores and 50% not sophomores. What we want to do is compare each of the prediction or the proportions to a 0.25. So before you click OK, you'll want to change this test value to 25. So you'll note that you'll have to kind of assess how many conditions there are and then put in the appropriate test value here. If you're expecting them to be equally distributed, then you're going to have to represent the equal distribution in the test value. So I'm going to click OK. Now notice this says 0.5. Oh, it said 0.5, but as soon as I clicked OK, it switched to the 0.25 that I had entered. So what we see here is that eight people were freshmen, seven were sophomore, seven were juniors, and 15 were seniors. And so when I look at these counts, the 0.216, so 21.6% of people being freshmen wasn't significantly different from the 25% that we predicted, right? And then the 18.9% of sophomore and the 18.9% of juniors, those were also not significantly different from the predicted value of 25%. However, the 40.5% of the uh, participants being seniors significantly differed from the prediction of 25%. And so that's why we see this p-value is less than 0.05. So in other words, the answer is, did she sample uh, class standings equally? The answer would be no, she did not. She sampled more seniors than the others. There's significantly more seniors than was predicted because this 40.5% is more than the predicted value of 25%. And we knew that because this p-value is less than 0.05. So now we're going to do our test for independence to see if degree liking differed by class standing. So again, we're gonna click on frequencies. And now we're gonna click on contingency tables. And so essentially what we're doing is we're kind of blending the two in a table and then seeing how those counts match up. So um, you can follow whatever pattern. It doesn't really matter if you do rows and columns, whichever um, helps you visualize it. However, typically we put the um, independent variable in the rows and the dependent variable in the columns. Um, but again, it's, it, which one is the independent, which one is the dependent can all be kind of discussed anyway. So I am going to do class standing in rows and degree liking in the columns. Now already I can start to see the counts here. So see how I, uh, there's four freshmen that like their degree and four freshmen that don't like their degree and four sophomore that like their degree and three sophomore that don't. And then um, I kind of see this is jumping out to me as 14 seniors that like their degree and one senior that doesn't like their degree. So this is something um, already that's starting to jump out. And down here we see our chi-square test. So this, this is standing for the symbol of chi-square. So our chi-square calculated value came out to be 7.969 and then had a degrees of freedom of three, and that's because we had four conditions minus one, right? So um, just like we do with the ANOVA, we had conditions minus one, we have four conditions minus one, so our degrees of freedom is three. If we were to look up the critical value, we could have seen that this value was larger than the critical value, but we also can see from our p-value that um, because this is less than 0.05, that is a significant relationship up here that class standing does predict different uh, degree liking patterns. And now we have to see what makes sense for the interpretation. And here, because the counts are so um, clear, it's very clear that seniors were more likely to like their degrees than not, whereas the other class standings were equally likely to like or not like their degree. 
sometimes this does not jump out at you. Um, and so there are some other things we can do to understand the pattern. And so what I wanna click on is, um, <clears throat> we can scroll down here, oops. We can uh, make sure that we're clear on what the expected values were. So we could click on expected. And so you can see if you weren't sure what was the expected value, it would say, well, you, the actual count was four, but given the data, it should have been 5.4. And this one was four and it should have been 2.59. That might help you see where the differences are. If that doesn't help, then you can sometimes do the percentages. So we were saying that it should be 50-50, right? And it ended up being 50-50. Um, this one was saying it should be 50-50 and it ended up being 57 and 42. So that might help. If that doesn't help, you could do the columns. And so this is basically breaking it down by columns. And if that doesn't help, you can do the totals. Although I, I sometimes find the totals don't usually help students. I find that usually the rows do. So there's ways to visualize your data. The last way I'll help you um, visualize your data is to kind of come out of this screen. Um, so I'll say, okay. And now I'm gonna go back up to descriptives and we're gonna make um, a chart. And that might help us. So um, what I might do is take the variable that has the most um, conditions and that would be class standing because it has four. And then I'm gonna split it by the yes and no responses. And I'm gonna come down here and hit distribution plot. And so what I can see, and it might help me visualize it more, I might have to scroll down, but these are those who didn't like their degree so freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. And then this is those who liked a degree, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Do you see how visualizing it, it becomes a little more clear that the senior conditions swapped were they much more likely to like their degree and not like their degree, where the freshman, sophomore, junior, seniors kind of were split even. See, this goes about four here, and then up above, they're running across four here. So, these are all techniques to help you interpret your relationship between the two variables. Sometimes it can be hard to visualize. And so these are just different approaches you can take to see what the pattern is. Because you get the chi-square value that tells you there's a relationship between those two, a predictive utility in knowing one from the other. If I know your class standing, I now have a better predicting utility of whether you like your degree or don't like your degree but then trying to articulate how the pattern of results is um, coming out, it can be more difficult when you're looking at the table. So if it doesn't jump out at you, these little things of looking at the percentages or the expected values or looking at the plots are all things that can help you so that you can say what the pattern is. So now let's put all of those numbers into our um, responses here. So are people more likely to like their degree than not? Yes, people are more likely to like their degree because the p-value, which was 0.047, was less than 0.05. Did Dr. Dam sample all class standings equally? Dr. Dam sampled more seniors than the others. The p-value, 0.036, was less than 0.05. So we know that Dr. Dam sampled more seniors. Is there a relationship between class standing and satisfaction with degree? This is the more interesting question. Yes, there's a relationship. Class standing is related to liking of degree. The chi-square value is 7.969 and the p-value is 0.047. So here's the, the basic statistics. And then now we want to interpret that relationship. And basically, while the other class standings didn't appear to differ in the liking of their degree, seniors were much more likely to like their degree than to not. So this is our example moving forward, uh, sorry, putting all the data that we got from JASP into our answers.